I'm Daryl Thompson Norton. I was the director of the show tonight. I am an associate professor here in the Visual and Performing Arts program. I teach theater and I teach um, public speaking also. And we are here with one of my favorite people on earth, <laughs> Kiara Robinson. We call her Kiki. <laughs> so Kiki, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Answer just as honestly as you can. If you don't have that, oh, just fake it. That's what we do, right? Right. All right, so please describe your work. Um, so I am an actress or actor for those who like to go above and beyond. I believe that I can play any role. I believe that um, I can fit any mold that a director has for me. And I have been working on my craft since, well, I think I'm a born certified actress, okay? I was the drama's queen. I, I've been very dramatic my whole life, but I actually started taking my craft seriously in high school when I got casted in a play and I actually won Best Actress Award at my school, so that's when I was like, "Yeah, you could do that." <laughs> oh, that's great. What was the What was the role? What show it was, was it? Um, I was a ghost. Her name was Jessie. The school, I mean, the play was called um, "Bang Bang You're Dead," and I was a ghost who came back and haunted the school shooter. So it was really interesting, yeah, cool. right? Cool. <laughs> so let me tell, let me ask you, what does your art mean to you? Um, it means a lot to me because, like I said, I'm a born certified actress. And I feel like I have a lot of skills. I'm good at a lot of things, but it's kind of hard to go to school for everything that I want to do. It's kind of hard to dabble into every single thing that I want to do. But when you're an actress, you can do anything. You can play any part and, you know, you, you pretend to be someone else for a split second or you pretend to dive into what's, what you have inside of you and just bring that through your character. So, yeah. I'm so nervous. I totally agree. Don't be nervous. <laughs> I like it as much as I do. <laughs> okay, so can you describe your process or how you approach your work? Um, okay, so I read a script and I see where I can, uh, where I personally can fit in that script. Like, where, where am I in the script? If I can't necessarily find me, then I research. I do research on the play. I, um, you know, find similarities in people that I may know and probably talk to people. And just, you know, I, I find inspiration all around me to convey a certain character. For this character in particular, Angela is everybody. Angela is not just a rich person. She's not just um, black. She's not just white. She's anybody. She can be anybody. And so I just thought about the women around me. You know, women can be smart. Women can be sexy. Women can be ditzy and clueless sometimes. They can also be mischievous and the mastermind behind everything. So I just thought about the women around me, and I just embodied that through my character here. And so how did you think that Angela was that ditzy person, or was she a little Angela bit more? Angela was the mastermind behind everything. She knew exactly what was going on, and she used her sexiness and her smarts to get all these men to do her dirty work. Whole time she wanted her husband dead, but she couldn't do it, so she got her lover and she got Larry to do all her dirty work for her. So how long you think she and Larry stay together? Oh, um, I know Larry, she's gonna find somebody else eventually. <laughs> she's gonna find somebody else. So what is the theme of your thesis really, your concept behind your work? My theme for my thesis is don't box me in. I don't want to be just known as a black actress. I want to be the kind of actress that any director can mold into anything. It doesn't matter the characteristics or the demographics. I want to be able to be molded and malleable for any director to use me. It doesn't matter about my characteristics. It doesn't matter about my background. It doesn't matter about my skin color. I just want to be able to be used the best way possible. Right, right. Good for you. What do you think is the most important tool that you have as an artist performer? Whew. I think um, I'm an empath. Is that the word? I'm an empath. I kind of take on all emotions of the world, and I use everything that I've gone through, everything that um, I see other people go through and um, maybe give advice to or help people out. I take all of it in, and then when I read a script, I'm like, hmm, I remember when so-and-so went through this. Even if I haven't gone through this, I have the gift of making people feel what I feel or even feeling what other people feel and being able to embody that through a character. We call that Stanislavski's yes, magic if, exactly. right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> so what inspired you? Who, who are your influencers? Okay, um, my family, because I think we all should have our own TV show. 
personally. We all have different characters, and, and I feel like I take all of them with me everywhere, so my family. But if I'm thinking of actual famous people, I want to say that my, my favorite actress would probably be Gabrielle Union. But as far as Angela, I would have to go with Felicia Rashad, um, Eartha Kitt, um, Dionne Warwick. I would have to go with all of those people who embody this elegance and this class, and they all give that to each role, but they all play it differently. And that's just what I want to bring to the industry. I could so see Eartha Kitt playing definitely, that role. I'm telling definitely. You. <laughs> um, so how, what did you do well? What do you think you did well in the play? Ooh. Um, honestly, we, we were really back there just talking about that. I think that we, I did a good job at the cover-ups. Like, um, you know, like a lot of people like to just stay on the script, like just say the words so I know my cue, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. We get up here and we get nervous and we forget lines, And but I did a really good job tonight at covering covering up lines and just keeping it going and keeping it natural and just trying my best to keep the, the character at the forefront, you know? As someone who has read that script 150 million times. A hundred times, and I got up you here did. and oh. bombed it. Um, so, same question. What do you think you could improve upon? Ooh, I think um, I could probably I could have done more research on Angela. I could have um, I could have dug a little deeper with her. Even though I, I carried Angela with, with, I got casted for this role when I was twenty years old, but we weren't allowed to do it at certain times. All a lot of things was happening, so then it just became my senior thesis, and I could have been carrying her with me throughout that time. But I'm just like, oh, it's just the role, like you know. But as I got the script, and I'm like, okay, this is really happening. You need to do more research. You need to really embody this character. So I think that I could have, I could have embodied her a lot more. Like you know, I, I tried around with different voices and all that kind of stuff, and I just wasn't right. delivering that dizzy voice like how I wanted to. But if I could do it all over again, I would just really, really make her shine a lot more. Okay. Um, when you're working through problems in your work. Who do you talk to? Oh, Lord, I got to talk to the Lord because um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I talk to God, of course. I'm a very spiritual person, but I do talk to my mother, my very supportive mother. I do talk to my grandma, who's also a very spiritual person. My friends, my L.A. Nation, shout out to y'all. I see y'all. I talk to a lot of people because I believe that you can take different things from different people. What, whatever you don't need, just throw it out. But whatever you do need, take it with you. Right. Learn from it. Apply it to your life and keep it going. Good, good, good. Um, what did you learn about the field, the specific medium, so theater, mm -hmm. the theme and yourself as an artist through your work? So... Through my work or through this field, I've learned that um, it's easy to be boxed in. It's easy to be stereotyped. It's easy to, because I'm a, a black woman and, and sometimes, you know, each, each race and demographic gets negative, all kind of negative feedback or light. But it's easy to say, oh, well, let's just cast her in this because she's loud or she's black so she can be loud or ghetto or anything like that. But that's also the point of my thesis is to show, like, I can do anything. I don't have to just be a black character. That's what I loved about Angela is that the writers of this play did not just want her to be a specific person. They wanted her to, she could have been anybody. And I'm just happy that I'm a black woman playing somebody that could have been anybody. Yeah, well, you have an elegance about you, though. Yeah. That's, that was the thing that I was really attracted to when I was thinking about the role for well, thank you. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how does your work contribute to the academic discourse in the arts? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I think that as far as the theater department here, I think that it's easy to um, kind of point out specifics and what they think a theater student should be. So when I tell people, oh, I'm a theater major, they're like, what? Oh, I thought you was social work. Or I thought you was business. Or you know, and I'm like, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to be the stereotype. I'm an actress, and I want to bring more light into the theater department and Players by the Sea and and so many programs that we have here. I would like to partner up with the mass communication so we can get things going as far as shining a light on the theater department because we have wonderful people here who believe in us and you believe in me since I literally walked in your class. I'm pretty sure I came late, but <laughs> you believed in me 
And you never stop since then. And I just feel like, you know, some people should go for it. Some people are scared to make this their career yeah. because they're like, oh, it's not a real job. It's not. But this is I can't see myself doing anything else. You know, and I was telling somebody the other day about how many hours we put in. Yes. The show. Oh, my gosh. Because we rehearse about three to four hours a, a night. Right. Then the students still get together on the weekends to run their lines. Right. Plus, they're still going to spend a couple of hours each day memorizing those lines. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's a full-time job. Yes, it is. <clears throat> if you had one recommendation to underclassmen um, that will soon be in your shoes, because we've got a whole group coming in now, yeah. what would it be? What would you tell them? Don't be afraid. Just go for it. I, I remember um, coming to your class one day, and I was crying to you. I was like, I just think I need to change my major because it's not. I don't know how I'm going to benefit from this afterwards. I need a job. I need to make money. And I remember you like, this is what you do. Like, this is, this is what you do. Don't be afraid. Go for it, you know? And um, I just really believe that life is a movie, and you can't let other people and other factors stop you from getting the award. You have to just go for it. You have to just keep your eye on the prize. And don't worry about everything else that's going on. You got this. So that's what I would tell them. I had that same thing happen to me. Right. You know, I went to a teacher and I said, I think I'm going to go into yeah. education. And they went, no, you need to be an actor. Right. <clears throat> um, when, uh, let's see. When faced with making a big decision... How do you decide what is the right thing to do? Child, I'd be scared what my mama going to say if I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I pretty much trust myself. It, it's taken a long time to become the young woman that I am today. So gut feelings are don't lie. Consciousness doesn't lie to you. So um, I probably evaluate it because I am, I am a worry ward. I'm like, make sure you look at all sides of it and... You know, if there's risk, be willing to take the risk. You have to be an adult about it and say, okay, if, if this is worth, worth the risk, then go for it. And just evaluate all sides and make the best decision possible for yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, really. What are you doing to ensure you continue to grow and develop as a performer? Okay, I plan on taking plenty of classes because I, I just believe that you can't stop. Um, it's always new things to learn. You can't, it's always growth to be made. So I plan on taking plenty of acting classes once um, this is over and I graduate in December. And um, <laughs> I plan on taking plenty of classes and I want to take vocal lessons because I used to be a really decent singer and really? now I kind of yeah. let it go a little bit. Um, and I just want to keep perfecting my craft. I want to keep meeting people who can teach me different things and I just want to keep evolving as an actor. I, I really want this to be my start. Like, oh, I remember seeing her like this, but she's not even like that no more. Like, she's just grown. That's what I want people to take from this, is that there's always room to grow, and there's nowhere to go but up. Right. Can you continue learning? Absolutely. Even if you get into a, or an acting class that you know everything that's being taught, right. you're still going to take something else from that teacher that's there. Absolutely. You know, there are actors. Absolutely. Um, so that was the end of our questions. Okay. But now I have a couple. Um, what do you feel that this department did for you? Oh, that is a really good one. Okay. See, she doesn't know the <laughs> questions I'm going to ask that her. That was a really good one. So I think um, the, the best thing that this department did for me is believe in me and give me a chance. Um, because I, I, I always say this, and if Pro Professor Jackson was here right now, she'd be like, why do you keep saying that? And you would even say that too, but I always, I'm like, I'm not the best student. Like, the school thing is, is really not for me, but I know that I've always wanted to be considered an educated black woman, and I always just want, know that I wanted to do this. I know you don't need to go to school to be an actress, but I, for some reason, I couldn't change it. Like, I just... Every time I went to, something stopped me. So I'm like, maybe this is destiny. Maybe this is my faith. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But the best thing you and Professor Poole and Professor Jackson has always done for me was believe in me and keep pushing me to, to break outside of my mold and just believe that I could do it and I could, you know, really be the best that I can be. So I really appreciate that from all of you um, that... It, it takes a lot to, to push a student that doesn't believe in themselves sometimes. And sometimes you believed in me more than I did for myself. And sometimes that was the willpower that kept us going. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate that in all of you. And I will take that with me forever. Good. good. <laughs> I know you got it. I, and when you win that award, you know, you have to say, um, I want to thank no. everybody at Savannah State Absolutely. University. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, right, and make a big donation. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? Anybody got a question? 
Don't even come do on. it. Don't even do it. Cause I just see no, all friends I and I just feel like ask her, like, question. <laughs> ask her if it's her Tiffany. real hair. <laughs> 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 I was just gonna say, did you have an area when you graduate um, in acting that you wanted to do more like stage versus film or anything? All right, let me just. She wants to know if if you're gonna go more into stage or more into film. What's your preference there? Oh, that's a really good question because I I love the stage, but I really want to tap into the film. Um, because I don't know, I I really want to do both. I want to do everything, but I haven't done much of film yet. So I really want to get into that a lot more. I would love to be on Broadway one day. Um, so it's just it's really wherever like life takes me. I'm I'm grateful for it all. <laughs> What made you choose this play as your thesis? What was your inspiration? What's the, who wants to know what made her choose this play as her thesis? <laughs> All right, um, I, can I start this yeah, one off? Go ahead. Right. We tried to do this play, what was it, three years three, ago? Three yeah. years ago. Got the week before the show, and something happened with the royalties, and we could not do the show. We'd been in rehearsal for like six weeks, and then we realized it had just been pulled out from under us. So then we started it again in the spring, and on March the 15th, we all had to go home. Oh, yeah. And so then we didn't get to finish it then. So this was three, number Third three, time. three strikes your mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen this time, I'm never going to do it again. Yeah. So there you go. And what's crazy is um, there have been times when I could have been not doing it anymore. Like he could have went with someone else or he could have, you know, like, you know, let's just audition it again and see if you got it. But because he believed in me and because it's very hard to – do a senior thesis. Oh my gosh. It's so hard to come up with concepts and all this extra stuff. And I went through wanting to do five monologues to wanting to do my own stage play. But he's like, listen, you don't need all that stress. Like just, we already got something going. Just take what you have. And I'm stubborn. I'm like, no, I want to do my own thing. I want to do my <laughs> own stuff. But I'm like, you know what? I don't need that stress. So let's just go for it. And I just gave it my all and I just stuck with it. Yes, say. <laughs> what is your um like if you had one actress to work with who would it be gabrielle union i just love her i just feel like she she's um her her naturalism and i just i just really identify with her naturalism um and she's been working for a long time and maybe taraji angela all the classic black right. ladies yeah <laughs> ma'am it's okay. Um, would you see yourself like doing other things in the element of theater? Like, would you see yourself directing or production? Yes, I absolutely can. I, I feel like I consider myself a creative director. So I have so many ideas going through my mind all the time. Even for this play, I'm like, oh, I wish we could have did this. Or I wish we could have did that. And what's, what's great about you is you always let me suggest that You're like, let me just hear what she got to say. Let's just see if it works this way. But, yes, I can honestly see myself directing. I'm not a very good writer, but I'm working on it because I can see myself writing. I have so many ideas in my head about TV shows and films and even stage plays. And I'm like, I just got to get these ideas out or share them with somebody so that they can, they can help push that dream forward. So, yes, I can definitely see myself doing more than one thing. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes mother um what would you tell the ones that's coming up behind you that passionate about what they do but don't really have the support like you have but they know that they have it inside what would you tell them to help encourage them for them to keep pursuing what it is that they want that is a really good question because sometimes support or finances can stop stop your dreams mentally. But I would just say that, you know, if you can't, if you don't have the finances to do it, but you know you really want to do it, work on your craft on your own and meet people, network. You never know who wants to invest in your dream. You never, I, my first play um, outside of school, I had this director who was very passionate about me. And there were times when I couldn't get back and forth to the rehearsals and he would come pick me up. Or there were times when, you know, I maybe wanted things done and I couldn't get them done and he would just help out. So people, if you're really passionate, people will see, the right people will see it and they will help you with your dreams. And, you know, tough times don't last all the time. Solid people do. And, you know, you, you won't be down forever. So just keep going and continue working on your craft. God, God has a plan, and if this was meant for you, you will, you will have it. 
Good. I got a question. You've talked about what you want to do later on in life mm -hmm. um, with starting a new. Oh. So tell us a little bit about <laughs> your plans for the future. My big plan. Yeah, the big one. Okay, so you guys hear it here first. If you hear anybody else talk about this, you heard it right here first. My, exactly, my big dream is to start an HBCU for performing arts, solely for performing arts. Um, we have plenty of HBCU schools for like medicine or, you know, regular HBCUs for everything, but I just really want to focus on the arts because there are a lot of people who, you know, especially in the black community who, like I said, feel like they can't, they, they shouldn't go for it because it's not a real job or yada, yada, yada. But I just really want to, uh, to start an HBCU for um, performing arts, fine arts, all of the above. If you can act, sing, draw, if you like music, if you want to record something, if you, anything of the arts, let's do it. And, you know, I'll be looking for board members and, you know, investors. So, again, if you, you know, y'all believe in the girl dream, you heard it here first. Give me your monies. <laughs> but, no, I really, that's really my, my lifelong dream is to start an HBCU for performing arts. And I'll tell you, knowing you, I bet it will happen. I, I know it will happen. <laughs> I may be dead at the time. But no, <laughs> you're going to be an honorary, honorary board member. <laughs> I'll leave you some money. Ten, yeah. <laughs> 10 or $15, I don't know. <laughs> All right, any more questions? All right, okay, we've got one back here. This is a simple question, but I just want to know so I can say, yeah, she's from here. Right. Where are you from, though? Oh, okay, that's a good question because I am from multiple places, yeah. but... <laughs> I um I just consider myself from Richland County, South Carolina. That's what I that's what's on my diploma. I mean my degree, and that's what I'm sticking with. So Richland County, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. That's where I'm from. That may be where the school is because we need some more gumption down there. But that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's it. Everybody good? Ooh, we got a question in the back. What skills are affecting the part Okay, so I had no idea what a Uta Hagen six step was when I first went here. I had no idea what that was. But if you don't know, Uta Hagen six steps is basically character development. You have to, if the if the script doesn't give you a background for the character, you have to make up one up so you can make um, decisions for the character in your role. I had no idea what beat work was. I didn't know you had to slowly do things and fastly do things and emphasize this and I was just literally like just talking basically and just going off my own knowledge but these professors did a really great job at drilling that in my head and I don't think I will ever get another script in my hand without saying okay you got to do your six steps or you got to do your beat work and all that kind of stuff so those are the two things that I can point out off the top of my head that I learned. And tell us what a beat is. Didn't know you were going to get a test, did you? Yeah. <laughs> that was my beat. So basically it's a pause. It's a, it's, it can be a pause that changes the mood, a pause that changes the, um, the flow or maybe the speed or the pace. It's just, it's just a dramatic pause. That's what it is. <laughs> Any more I quiz them when I run into them in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Well, guys, we really do appreciate you coming tonight and enjoying the show. I hope you enjoyed the show. I heard a lot of laughter. I heard right a lot here. of laughter. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much. And, you know, y'all remember your girl, okay? Y'all seen it here first. This is the beginning. This is, I will remember all of you. <laughs>